Pepper. The highest ranked Sun Belt team ever calls Conway, South Carolina home. We're talking about the number 15 Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. They put that perfect record on the line again tonight against a three and three South Alabama team. Welcome to Brooks Stadium. Courtney Lyle alongside UMass Hall of Famer, Rini Angolia, and everything is flowing this Coastal Carolina way. They are bowl eligible for the very first time. And to think, it's crazy. They were picked to finish dead last in the Sun Belt. Don't think those players don't know that. They're playing with a chip on their shoulder. A great season to this point thus far for Coastal Carolina. Look, their quarterback, Grayson McCall, certainly lights up the highlight reel, but he has time to make those good decisions because of this offensive line. The quarterback, the skill players, you know, they get a lot, all the glory, but it all starts up front with offensive line play. Look how clean this pocket is for Grayson McCall. He can scan the field, he can go through his progressions, look to the right, come back to the left, and deliver the ball. This is an offensive line. It's gotten a lot of uh, notoriety nationally lately because of their height. They're a little shorter up front, but they are a, a good group. They play well together. Again, a clean pocket, allowing Grayson McCall to step up. I love their communication. Sam Thompson, their center, is a leader. Again, allowing Grayson McCall to step up, making an easy throw. Yeah, the South Alabama defense is going to be tested, and they're going to need linebacker Riley Cole to step up. He is second in the Sun Belt in tackles per game. He's a good-looking linebacker, six foot three, 225 pounds, but he's got great speed. Now, he's going to play to the field side tonight, and that's because they need to try to slow down the option attack of Coastal Carolina. Riley Cole, very athletic, does a great job reading and recognizing the plays and reacting to them. He is going to have to have a big night tonight if they're going to slow down this very high-powered Coastal Carolina offense. South Alabama looking to bounce back after a loss to Georgia Southern last week. The Jaguars will get the ball first. Coastal Carolina won the toss and deferred to the second half. Kawan Baker and Colin Lacey are back as Massimo Biscardi gets set to kick things off. And I think it's important tonight for South Alabama to get off to a fast start. Do not get behind early against this Coastal team. The laser comes off the boot of Biscardi and it goes back into the end zone. So South Alabama will start things on their own 25 yard line. The South Alabama group led by their quarterback, just a sophomore, Desmond Trotter out of Irondale, Alabama, went to Shades Valley and um, put up some strong numbers last week against Georgia Southern. They got a chance to win that game. Yeah, a good sized quarterback, 6'3", 200 pounds. He's got good vision. He is getting better with each and every rep. As you see, he's a sophomore, a young player. He's mobile. He can move around. Really, the, the problem South Alabama has had this season is protecting up front. We're going to probably see some new offensive linemen in there. They have to play well tonight. Juan Baker goes in motion. The handoff goes to Carlos Davis. He's the featured back in the South Alabama offense and takes it just past the 30-yard line. Yeah, he's the leading rusher. And you know, talking to the offensive coordinator, Kenny Edenfield, this week, you hear offensive coordinators, you see, you hear announcers say, stay ahead of the chains. That's how you do it right there. First down, pick up six yards. That opens up your offense. Second and four. And Trotter on the move. He'll keep it himself and tuck inside. Alex Spillum is there to wrap him up. Moves the chains about a yard. And it's aggressive Coastal Carolina defense led by Chad Staggs, our defensive coordinator. That time Spillum, number 10, from the safety position. But 29, Silas Kelly, one of the Mullet brothers, was there as well. Good job to get to the quarterback. You'll see some strong defense. You'll see some strong mullets on this Coastal Carolina team. Third and three coming up for Desmond Trotter. Baker goes in motion again. It's Trotter calling his own number and immediately met by Coastal Carolina's Teron Jackson, number nine in the black jersey. And Jackson is one of the best defensive linemen. Usually he's being double teamed. This time they're going to go just try to fake the jet sweep, a little quarterback power. And look how fast Teron Jackson gets off the block, gets to the backfield for the TFL. So South Alabama will send Jack Brooks on to punt. The Aussie punter and Javon Hiley is back to receive for Coastal. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of Aussie punters out there around the nation. It's a popular trend. They do a pretty good job, too. When booted high into the sky, Hiley will try to run it, but doesn't have much room to go. 
We will see Grayson McCall in Coastal Carolina for the first time on offense when we come back to Conway. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville, and in part by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. A look at some of the brave men and women around the world sporting their school colors. And at ESPN, we salute America's heroes for their incredible sacrifice and service to our country. No score just yet. First time we are seeing Coastal Carolina on offense. Grayson McCall hands it off, and it's Shamari Jones who falls forward. McCall is a stud. Yeah, I just, you know, and it's crazy to think he's a redshirt freshman. He grew up a lot. This team had 15 practices in the spring, one of the only teams in the country, and I think Grayson McCall, you know, really used that wisely and grew, but he does an exceptional job of going from his first read to his second to his third, and then he's athletic and he can run the ball, and he's got that moxie about him. You want your quarterback to have just a, a great leader, and you look at those numbers, 15 TDs to only one interception, exceptional. Yeah, hard to believe he's just a redshirt sophomore, only saw an action in a couple of games last year as they give the ball to Reese White. What a hole Reese White has! Somebody try to catch him! He'll be hit around the 25-yard line, a huge pickup, and South Alabama getting in the face of Reese White, but check out what he just did. Yeah, whether it's Maribel Jones or Reese White, it's a three-headed attack, and, and Reese White is 185 pounds. They like to run him between the tackles. He's a power runner, but you see with that vision as he bounces it backside, great speed as he gets down the left sideline and a big yardage gain for Reese White. Officially call it a 46-yard pickup and a big first down for Coastal Carolina. McCall pulls it. Over the top he goes and is able to connect with Sam Denmark. Excuse me, no, that's Michael McFarlane, his first catch of the season. Yeah, the big tight end out of Orlando, Florida, played at Lake Nona High School. And you just see the zip on the ball from Grayson McCall as he steps up in the pocket. Great job finding his big tight end. Another first down. You can see how quickly this Coastal Carolina offense can get things going. And when they run the ball as well as they are to start, it just opens the entire thing up and it really puts defenses in a bind. That's something Jamie Chadwell wanted to do was run the ball well early in the game. They certainly have. We'll call a little option. Malik spins and is taken down about the line of scrimmage. His helmet comes Jason off. On the quarterback caper. Number four, Wayne. Yeah, and he'll have to come off if that helmet came out yeah. for a play, but Riley Cole was right there. Yes, Christian so. Bell, 49 as well, played option very well right there. That's how you want to defend it. So Fred Payton, number nine, comes in. Remember, we saw him play the entire Georgia Southern game because Grayson McCall was out with an injury. He started six games last year. A ton of experience for a backup quarterback. And he can spin it. He's got a good arm, so I wouldn't be surprised, even though he's right off the bench. They may throw it right here. He's got Reese White behind him coming out of the pistol. Rolls back the other way. Almost is picked off. That was Dwayne Betts. Almost with the interception for South Alabama. Yeah, that wouldn't have been good. Come off the bench for one play, throw a pick, but looking for the big tight end, McFarlane again. And as you said, the defensive back, Betts, gets in there. Should have picked it off. Would have been a huge play defensively. And Grayson McCall back in here, third and goal. McCall all alone, three wide receivers to the top of the screen. He goes to the near side to C.J. Marable, and he's going to be short, takes it to the one-yard line. So now a fourth down coming up for Coastal. Yeah, it was a good tackle to keep him out, but I think, Jamie Chadwell, you go for this. You've got momentum. you got this offensive line we talked about. Good tackle to keep Marable out. Makes a nice catch. Just can't reach the ball to the pylon. Excellent tackle there by Ryan Melton. But, yeah, this is, to me, this is a no-brainer. You go for it. You tell this offensive line, you drive off the ball, you get us in the end zone, give it to your big back, who I believe is going to be Shamari Jones in there. Yep, Shamari Jones is back there. Marable is lined up. They send him in motion now. Jones gets it. 
and Coastal, the fourth down, pays off. They go for it, and they're in for six. I know a lot of teams like to get fancy down there. I just love it. Fourth and goal, you tell your offensive line, we're going to go right at it. Give it to my 220-pound back in Shamari Jones, who I like that out of him. Sometimes he likes to go outside, but he's a big back. Get behind those pads. Get behind that right side. Trey Carter, Stephen Badosky, Sam Thompson in the center, and just say, I'm going to move it a yard or two. I'm going to get in the end zone, and I'm going to score here. And that's exactly what they did. First touchdown for Shamari Jones in their last three games. Did not have one. This is his third of the season as Massimo Biscardi lines up to kick the PAT for Jamie Chadwell, but a pretty solid start for Coastal Carolina. Moving quickly, too. Tack on one more. Coastal up 7 nothing. Yeah, great way to start offensively for Coastal. Running attack down the field, sharing the load. Jamari Jones, shot to Claire's, lead it by seven early. MLS Decision Day is tomorrow, the regular season finale with all 26 teams playing. The Eastern Conference matches start at 3.30 Eastern, while the West will start at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. We'll have the Union and the Revs on ABC with Philly looking to lock up the top seed in the East and New England trying to lock up the sixth seed. So a lot on the line. We'll also have coverage of the most important matches on ESPN+. Plus. Make sure you download the app or go to ESPN+. Plus. Dot com. You know, I'm a, a soccer aficionado. I've never yeah. played a game in my life, but I got two daughters that play, so I got to tell them what they're doing right or wrong, right? So, kind of makes me yeah. know nothing. You've watched a I've lot watched, of soccer, is what you're of, saying. I have watched a lot of soccer yes. in my day. Courtney Lyle, Rini and Golia with you as Coastal Carolina scores on their opening drive. South Alabama about to get a second opportunity after going three and out to start the game. Juan Baker and Colin Lacey back for the Jaguars. And Baker calls for the fair catch. And it's been a year of history for Coastal Carolina. They got their second win over a Power 5 school when they beat Kansas in the opener. And it didn't stop there. Picked up their very first win over a ranked opponent. They beat number 21, Louisiana, on October 31st, Halloween. They became bowl eligible for the first time with a shutout win over Georgia State. And they not only have the highest ranking in school history, they're the highest ranked team in the Sun Belt, period, ever. And you kind of see some glimpses of why Jamie Chadwell's team has been so good on that first drive so quickly to go down the field and score. And going back to that timeline, everyone knows that first week where the Sun Belt went 3-0 against the Big 12. I mean, not only did Coastal just destroy Kansas, you know, Louisiana got a win and Arkansas State got a win. Oh, by the way, Coastal's beaten both those teams already in conference. Flags coming out here. Marshall Lewis is our referee tonight. And that's Brian Ankerson, the center. He's the leader of that unit. 25 straight starts for Ankerson. A little snap infraction, though. Don't want to, that's one of those unforced penalties you just can't do, especially against a, a good aggressive defense like the Shants. And Steve Campbell, the head coach at South Alabama, is really challenging this offensive line on several different fronts, especially to give Desmond Trotter a little bit more time to make some decisions back there. Quickly gets rid of it to the near side. And he's taken down just inside the 30. That's Kate Sutherland. Teddy Gallagher was there on the tackle. Yeah, because this South Alabama team is loaded at wide receiver. You got Jalen Wayne, the, the redshirt junior. Oh, by the way, his uncle is Reggie Wayne. We all know who he is. Jalen Tolbert, number eight. Kawan Baker, 15. I mean, they are really good on the outside. Just the offensive line play hasn't been uh, up to par that, that Coach Campbell wants and needs. Jalen Tolbert is number eight on the near side in that white jersey. 
Desmond Trotter will flip Carlos Davis to his other hip, and he gives it to Davis. Cuts back, he goes trying to get the first down. He will pass the 40, and Carlos Davis taken down at about the 47-yard line. Davis is talented, but you talk about those wide receivers. It is so impressive, their numbers. Jalen Tolbert and Kohan Baker have really led this group. They each have 32 catches this season. And you just, they're your best athletes, so you want to get them the ball in space. You just got to give Desmond Trotter time to deliver it. Trotter on the move and connects with Jalen Tolbert. Really close. Yeah, they'll mark it just a yard over, moving the chains for South Alabama. Yeah, excellent job by Tolbert to come back. Trotter rolls out of the pocket, throws it nicely on the run for the first down. This is Carlos Davis. You know, it's got to feel good for Des for Jalen Tolbert to get that catch early because uh, he had an opportunity to catch one in the end zone in their last game against Georgia Southern to possibly win it for South Alabama and wasn't able to pull it in. And Carlos Davis has had some room to work tonight. And this offensive line's doing nice. A nice job up front. They're getting off the ball. And I like the pace that Kenny Endenfield, the offensive coordinator, is going with right now. Once you get a defense back on their heels like this, keep going. Now, they're going to slow it up a little bit here, but doing a nice job. And Carlos Davis, I love his vision back there running the football. They'll give it to him again. This time he's got a little room around the edge. Another first down for Carlos Davis, the sophomore out of Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Yeah, he'll shake and bake you. He's 5'10", 205. He's got a really strong lower body. But I love how he presses the hole, bounces it. You see the little, little shimmy right there. So he leaves the defender in his dust. This time Coastal Carolina grabs a foot and just hangs on. That was Gerard Clark. And that's what you have to do to good, elusive bats. You've got to get penetration. you got to get to them as they press the hole. Get to them, slow them in their tracks at the line of scrimmage. That's how you slow down a good bat. You let a good bat get to the hole, get to that second level, you're going to have a long night. Second and 11 now for Trotter and crew. And Coastal's defense making the adjustment there. That was Jared Wilson. Teddy Gallagher, 34, is going to come up, the middle linebacker, with a host of other players. He's got the rock and the mullet with the, the blonde locks. Reedy, it's a good sign to number 77. Jacob Shoemaker is in at right guard. He was banged up, wasn't able to play last week. He's probably their best offensive lineman. Yeah, coach told us he's the most talented offensive lineman for sure. So it's a good for that offensive line that he's in there tonight. Big third down in the red zone. Looks back the other way. Cade Sutherland is the man for Trotter. And he'll be short of the first down. Well, and that's a touchdown, Arthur. That's a great call. That's a tunnel screen. But, boy, Alex Spillum, number 10, comes up from the safety spot and makes that tackle to keep him from getting the first down and scoring a touchdown. This was designed excellent. Look at the offensive line out front. And then Spillum just gets in between those big offensive linemen and makes that tackle. 31-yard field goal coming for Diego Guajardo. Oh, and they run up. Seeing if they can get Coastal to jump. That's Eli Ganey under center, the holder. Well, great discipline. We, we saw that last week, right, with Boston College and Clemson. That time, Coastal just holding their water. So timeout first called, 5-10 left to go here in the first quarter. Timeout on the field. Steve Campbell's crew hoping they can put some points on the board with a field goal coming up in his third season. He has really made a lot of strides with this South Alabama program. They were 2-10 and ten overall last year, only one Sun Belt win. Yeah, much improved this year. They are close. Uh, they really are. they got a new on-campus stadium that's beautiful. Uh, this year that just opened up. So it's a team that you talk to them, they're, they're close and they're getting there. This is going to be a 31-yard attempt for Diego Roberto. Kick is up. 
And it is good. The first points that Coastal Carolina has allowed in the last six quarters. A 31-yarder from Diego Guajardo. Well, it wasn't the prettiest kick, but it yeah. went through the uprights. That's, That's all, all that matters. matters. Yep. yep. <laughs> so a nice job by South Alabama. Obviously would have loved to match that touchdown, but a good answer. Drive down the field and get some points on the scoreboard. Well, we mentioned Coastal Carolina, the highest ranked Sun Belt team ever in the history of the conference. Here's how the top 10 shakes up. And we know a lot has happened today. And we're, we were talking earlier, yeah, Randy, what's we going to happen with Georgia? And Cincinnati. So yes. Cincinnati blows out Houston. They're sitting at six as a group of five team out of the American. Georgia loses, right, to Florida. Florida's eight. Clemson or Notre Dame's going to lose tonight. So, I mean, if you're a Cincinnati, that group of five team, you've got to be loving where you're sitting right now. But we'll see uh, We'll see where they get ranked. It's just uh, crazy stuff. Yeah, and how all of that possibly could impact Coastal Carolina, depending yeah. on, you know, what they do tonight. And oh, by the way, BYU in the top 10 yep. as well. Another big win against probably going to be their best win of the season over Boise at Boise last night. Jamie Chadwell not discussing rankings or anything like that, of course, with his with his team. They just want to go out and uh, they're excited about the bowl game that they've qualified yeah, and, you for. Know, and I've seen this team three times now this year. And the one thing, the one takeaway from calling this team is they have fun. Everybody has fun playing. Um, and I, it goes a long way. You, you would think, oh, everyone has fun. No, not necessarily. But this bunch loves to play. They love to practice. Yeah, here are the group of five teams who are ranked. And I'm sorry that we have to keep talking about UMass every week. Well, UMass we, isn't uh, on there. What know, are you talking about? I know, but Marshall beat them today. But, they, but UMass, my alma mater, scored 10 points. So they did. Baby steps. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a so, it's a pandemic year, Courtney. Yeah, I'm going to cut them up right <laughs> And somebody who's not on that list, Liberty, who's an independent. Yeah. Huge win over Virginia Tech. What the last second we don't even goal. have enough time to talk about I don't the ending. Know. But I'm sure if you're watching this game, you know how that game ended. If not, look, look it up. Coastal Carolina went 72 yards on their first drive and scored a touchdown. Here is drive number two, and the flags come out. We have another little uh, snap infraction. <laughs> Sam Thompson rifled that thing back to Grayson McCall, but no one was ready. Full start. Offense, number 63. Five-yard penalty remains first down. I give it to Trey Carter, the right guard. Well, we've been talking a lot about Grayson McCall. I mean, his high school coach even said it. Michael Hurts said, you know, this guy was born to be a quarterback. He saw early on he was a leader. At two or three years old, Grayson McCall wanted to watch NFL Network and wanted to watch old football games. He wasn't watching, what was it, Blues Clues back then? Huge pass over the middle just in front of his intended target incomplete. That was Sam Denmark. And that time he just he threw Denmark too far into the middle where the safety was. He brought Denmark into the safety, and I believe it was Keith Gallman right there that broke it up. That, that throw he wants to throw to the sideline away so the safety can't get there. But just getting back to Grayson McCall in high school. He ran an offense very similar to this in high school, and I think that has helped him tremendously to transition uh, to here at Coastal Carolina. And his high school Porter Ridge ran the triple option, and this Coastal offense has a few option looks in it. Dumps over the middle. This time is able to connect to, with Sam Denmark. He takes it to the 30. The question for the coaching staff about Grayson McCall was, how can he throw it? Because yeah. we've seen him run the triple option. We know he's got that aspect of it. Well, and look at his maturity there. So they were sitting at, at second and 15 because of the penalty. He's cool as a cucumber in the pocket. He takes the underneath route, and he picks up 10 yards, gets it to a manageable third and five. I mean, I'd love that out of the quarterback, let alone a quarterback that's a redshirt freshman. C.J. Marable is the running back. It's Javon Hiley in motion. McCall looks his way, dumps it off to Hiley. First down, Coastal. And Javon Hiley has really been the leader of that wide receiver group this year. It's been a lot of vertical shots. This time they put him in motion. Just a quick out, third five. And you see how quick Grayson McCall puts it on him. Makes the catch, turns up. And they can overcome that five-yard penalty that started this drive out. Hiley's had a couple of 100-yard receiving games this year against Louisiana and Georgia Southern. McCall coming off play action. So quick to get it out. And he's got Hiley again. Finally 
taken down at the 21 yard line. Nick Mobley was able to get there. And that's the other thing with Grayson Call. He can recognize and read the defenses really quick. And then there's no safety in the middle of the field. The play action holds. Holly's able to, to run a slant inside of his defensive back, and McCall puts it on him and lets him run after the catch. And a lot of that, too, during the pandemic. Grayson McCall watched a lot of video, a lot of, you know, you're sitting around, you couldn't do anything. That's helped him as well. And they're going to get South Alabama to jump. It was Chris Henderson who plays their bandit linebacker position. Yep, yeah, was in the neutral zone. And once he's in the neutral zone and the offense reacts to it, it should be encroachment on the defense. Offside, Offside. Defense. defense, number seven. Number seven. Five-yard Five penalty remains first down. And you said it, Chris Henry, he's, that, he's the rush defensive yeah. end, so he's ready to go that time. A little too quick. Greg Stewart, the defensive coordinator, not happy about that. McCall has Shermari Jones and C.J. Marable on either side now. It's Marable's turn. Rolling forward inside the 10-yard line. Another coastal first down. And he's got excellent vision to play there as well. And, you know, Marable's the back that they want to get off 20 touches in a game, whether it's throwing the ball, handing the ball off. The problem is the other backs are doing so well, Shamari Jones and Reese White, that that may actually take a few carries and touches away from C.J. Marable. But that's not a bad thing, keeping three good backs fresh. It's a good thing. This time it's Shamari Jones behind McCall out of the pistol. They flip it up to Marable. On the jet sweep straight into the end zone. C.J. Marable, another Coastal Carolina touchdown. Well, that was a meaningful touch for C.J. Marable. And Jet sweep, as you said, Courtney, but of course that's the cheapie for the quarterback, Grayson McCall, because he gave him the little flip forward, yep. so <laughs> it'll go down in the in the stats as a completion and a touchdown reception for C.J. Marable. His fifth of the season. He is 10th in the nation in total touchdowns this year. Yeah, Grayson McCall now with 16 Touchdown passes against only one interception this season. Not bad for a redshirt freshman. Not bad. <laughs> well, you mentioned that running back by committee and the coaching staff, uh, specifically Newland Isaac, who is the co-offensive coordinator and the running backs coach. He loves the room that he has. Early in the year, it was all C.J. Marable. And you know, as his team has progressed, has gotten better, Shamari Jones, Reese White have gotten more touches and they are producing, which is the big thing. So now you got three guys that you can really rely on. The thing I love about these three, Courtney, they all give you a different skill set. And that just opens your offense up tremendously. Of course, Jamie Chadwell, he's the head coach. He's got co offensive coordinators, but Chadwell calls the plays. So he opens, uh, you know, backs like that open things up. And really, it's all cylinders on go thus far this season for this shot to clear's offense. Yeah, New Newland Isaac and Willie Korn are his co-coordinators. There's Newland. And he loves, too, that uh, that gives Marable a little more time to take a breath, yes. take a beat. So in the fourth quarter, you get a fresh C.J. Marable. Listen, I, I'm a running back, former running back, and you do. You get beat up. You want to carry the ball 25, 30 times a game, but it, it adds up during the course of a season. So if you can keep your main guy fresh, uh, it pays dividends. Thirteen play, 147 yards, and two touchdowns for the first two drives for Coastal Carolina. They've been able to score touchdowns on both of those. So now South Alabama, you can't panic. You can't worry about the scoreboard right now. Worry about getting this first down. Trotter hands it off. Carlos Davis is the man. Back to the line of scrimmage, he goes. And is that, you know, I look at my notes. It, Coach Campbell said we got to make good decisions at the quarterback play. Good line play, right, that we talked about. There's a couple new linemen in there. We talked about Jacob Shoemaker. Uh, Hayden Merchant is in there as well. So better line play. And you got to be good on first down. Like right there, boom, you're behind the chains. It's second and ten. So you've got to be better on first down if you're the Jaguars. 
Trotter taking his time and finds one of his main men, Jalen Tolbert, a yard short of the first down. And Trotter shows you how he can spin it. Quick release, tall quarterback, boom, puts it right on Tolbert. Gets the third and short here. They move quickly. Carlos Davis hits a wall of Coastal Carolina players, but that should be enough for the first down. Yeah, it's a good tackle, but a good job by Davis to get it get it past the 35-yard line. Keep, you know, we were, keep this drive alive. We were watching some film on Desmond Trotter last night. I mean, his skill set is pretty good. He can and he as he get as he got into the game in Georgia Southern a little bit, he settled down. Yeah, and it, again, I think he is going to get better with each and every rep. He's in trouble right now. Coastal all over him. Gerard Clark got in there. Now they list Gerard Clark at 335. I'm going to say he's he's north of 350, but good job up front. And one of the keys for Coastal, Chad Staggs, defensive coordinator, he said we need to get to the quarterback with our defensive line, with really our front seven. We don't want to send a lot of blitzes because the receivers from South Alabama are so good. And that time, great pressure right up the middle by Coastal. And Kennedy Roberts also in on the action. Pocket collapsing once again. Back-to-back -back takedowns for this Coastal Carolina defense. And, and it's going to be a really long night for South Alabama if the defensive line of Coastal can get to Desmond Trotter like that. And I tell you what, you know, Gerard Clark, 15, he came here. He was a tight end. We talked to Jamie Chadwell about him. He was 230, 240 pounds. And we said, well, how do you get the defensive line? He said, well, he ate his way there. Yeah. And, but... <laughs> They said he's done a great job, you know, this season getting in shape for a big guy, and he's the quintessential nose guard, and I think he's going to have a chance in the NFL with his size and skill set. Tough break for Steve Campbell's crew. Back-to-back -back takedowns, Coastal Carolina rocking. Kick off your week nine NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern with the Countdown crew on ESPN and the app. Get an all-access look at the Seahawks' breakout wide receiver, DK Metcalf. Plus, Patrick Mahomes is wired for sound. They'll also have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and preview each game right up to kickoff. This is Carlos Davis for South Alabama to the 30. Yeah, nice job by Coastal there. Trotter had to flip that underneath to Davis. You'll give him that underneath run. Just come up and make the tackle. It was third and 24. He'll have to punt it away. Coastal's defense right before we went to break had back-to-back -back sacks, taking away 15 yards. They're 22 sacks now on the season. Yeah, offenses get, you know, all the credit and quarterbacks. And, yeah, I understand it, but this defense from Coastal, very uh, underrated, I think, um, for as well as they're playing this season. Javon Hiley back to receive this punt from Jack Brooks. Hiley calls for the fair catch as he's running out of bounds. About the 22. Well, Chad Staggs was uh, super pumped with his team last week. They won 51 to nothing. First shutout since joining the FBS. That was back in 2017. Only 30 passing yards. Remember, Georgia State at the time was leading the Sun Belt in points per game. And they really yeah, wanted that shutout. And, go and a lot of times when you home. when you win a game by 51 points, yeah, you're going to give up a touchdown. You got your backups in. You're going to give up. They did not give up the touchdown. You see him get the, uh, the Gatorade shower. Chad's dad is very happy. Hard to get a shutout. Especially a conference play, so. It was their first ever road shutout, yeah. too. Offensively, the second time this season that Coastal Carolina has put up over 50 points. A lot of people last week picked Georgia State in that game, so. Yeah. Who are those people? Yeah, might have, they might have felt a little <laughs> offended going into that game. Pick them last to finish in a conference. This is Reese White. Rolling out of bounds just short of the 30. Excuse me, Sharmari Jones. Yeah, Jones, for, for a bigger back, he likes to press and get outside and use his speed because he has good speed for his size. I think the coaches kind of agreed. We talked this week. They, when he goes with that power running kind of off tackle between the tackles, they really want him to use that big body, and he's getting better at it.
McCall pulls it away from Marable and sends it out to Greg Latushko. To the 40, he goes. I mean, every time Greg Latushko catches the ball, you look up and it was for a first down. Right. It's, it's amazing. He just gets open and good timing around there, the deep out. And McCall puts it on him. And you look up and it's like, yeah, first down. Yeah, 10 of his 11 receptions this season have gone for a first down. And a lot, and I, and I got some notes too, six of those oh. have been on third down. So he's like that quintessential kind of yep. third down possession receiver. And he had no catches coming into this season. Anything else you want to add on Greg Latushko? I don't have anything else. Okay. Good shot outside. And it's Bryce Carpenter, who we've actually seen uh, as one of their backup quarterbacks. Yeah, and he's out there playing receiver. A little out cut, puts it on, and he takes contact. The mouthpiece went flying out. You love that. And he's like, put me back in the, in the formation. I'm ready to go. He had six starts at QB last season. And now they're going to shift Grayson McCall out to the top of your screen and let Bryce Carpenter go to work. On the option look, will keep it himself and falls forward to the 40 yard line. So I love that. So Jamie Chadwell gets Bryce Carpenter in and, and throws him a pass. And so the, you know, South Alabama said, okay, he's in, but then you keep him in and put him in quarterback and put Grayson McCall out there. So the one thing Carpenter's known as is a really good runner. So I think that's a way to kind of keep Grayson McCall a little fresher, not taking so many hits. Bring your quarterback in, Carpenter, that can obviously catch the ball as well. And you talked about it, he's got six starts under his belt as well. Second and four, McCall out of the pistol. It's C.J. Marable. Yeah, outstanding job that time by that Jaguars defense getting downhill in a hurry. It's Doug Sullivan. Yep, Sullivan coming inside out, coming up and run support. Good tackle. Going back to keeping McCall fresh, remember he is he was out of the Georgia Southern game with that shoulder injury. That's something that he's got to nurse every week too, so give him a little break. Third and five coming. McCall steps up. Not much room to go. That was Riley yeah. Cole. Drops him at the 40. And that's exactly what you have to do because usually Grayson McCall will make that linebacker miss and pick up that first down. That time Riley Cole had him in his sights, comes up, makes the tackle, and a great stand by South Alabama there, forcing the shot to Claire's to punt here. First time the Shants have had to punt tonight. First two drives ended in touchdowns. Ooh, really tight. What a punt and what coverage to go with it. CJ Marable hustled down there and grabbed it at the one yard line. That's where South Alabama will start after a 39 yard punt. You may wonder why we're showing you the 87 Troy Trojans and that's because three members of the South Alabama coaching staff we're on this team that won the national championship. Kenny Edenfield, who is the offensive coordinator, Greg Stewart and Steve Campbell, the head coach, all on that team. They have been together so long. And Coach Campbell was quick to say, you know, that really helped us get through the pandemic because we've been through a ton of stuff together. I wouldn't want to go through anything else. I wouldn't want to go through this with anybody else. And such great friends. I did a South Alabama game, a South Alabama game excuse me, last year. And usually when you do coaches meetings, you meet one at a time, you meet the head coach and then the offense scorer and then the defense coordinator. They were all together, all three of them. You know, that's how close they are. Uh, so it was great. It's a, a great friendship, great relationship, and you know, great coaches. And again, as I said, they, they got this program close to where they want to be to turn the corner. Trotter over the top. South Alabama has the first down and then some. Thanks to a big grab from Jalen Tolbert. Yeah, two quick passes. Boy, they were backed up at their own goal line. Boom, two quick passes to Tolbert. A lot of breathing room, out past the 20 now. Woo, 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 woo. 
Trotter rolling out, and again, the connection to Tolbert almost automatic as he's tiptoeing on the sideline. Yeah, they're going to say he was out of bounds. Couldn't get that toe in, but... Ruling really on the field was an incomplete pass. Check it down. You know, it was funny talking to Steve Campbell, the head coach. He said, we just, we can't just rely on passing because we have such good receivers. Let me take a look at it. Wow, that was close. Ooh. I mean, it was just off. The, the left foot looks like it's on yeah. the white. But that right one just lifted up. And, you know, and he was quick to say, just because we have great receivers, we just can't rely on the pass. We have to get some running game going as well, which they did early on in the first quarter. Well, Carlos Davis is met by a wall thanks to Coastal Carolina, and it's Silas Kelly. Kelly's the captain, just a hard worker in the middle, a kid that got hurt last year and drove himself to every away game just so he could be a part of the team and be there. You just love to see that. Kelly, Enoch McConzo, both were injured and both last year and both have returned to really help bolster the, this Coastal Carolina group. And they were able to add number 24, Jeffrey Gunner, who transferred back from NC State after playing a couple years here. Davis has dropped short of the first down. Fourth down coming up for South Alabama. Flag on the play. I didn't get a chance to see it here, but got tossed in front of that South Alabama sideline. Referees will talk about it. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 90. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Big break for South Alabama. Yeah, Roland Wooden coming off the field now. Got uh, his big paw in Carlos Davis's face mask, and as you said, keeps the drive alive. Big 15 yards. See if South Alabama can take advantage of it here. South Alabama's only score was a 31-yard field goal. And you can see the speed that Carlos Davis has when he's got room to run. They're going to mark this maybe short of the first down by a yard. And you see how he finishes, though. You always hear me say, run behind your pads. That's what I'm talking about. Run behind your pads, get low, and finish the run. That's Terry on Avery in there now, number 25. Avery gets it first down, South Alabama. It's funny because Avery and Davis, they're one's 25, one's 26. They're both about 5'10, 200 pounds, 195 pounds. Very similar running backs that both run extremely hard. Give himself a little low five to each other as they run off the field. Avery only had a couple of carries in their last game against Georgia Southern. Carlos Davis had 20 carries. And Davis back in. Kawan Baker goes in motion. Trotter rolling to his side, throws at the feet of the tight end. That's Trent Tyre. Uh, and Teron Jackson was coming off that right side once again for Coastal, forcing Trotter to throw that just a, a, a beat before he wanted to, goes to the ground. This, to me, Courtney, this is an important possession for South Alabama to get down there, get some points, keep that momentum up. from the Coastal 44. Trotter steps up and launches it out to Jalen to Jalen Wayne. A big pickup, and I like the composure from Trotter. Well, I do too. That time, Coastal sent a blitz. Trotter was able to sidestep it, step up in the pocket. I thought he might run, but I love that he kept his head up. Looked downfield, saw Jalen Wayne wide open and puts it on him. Davis falls forward for a yard. Yeah, it's very important for young quarterbacks to, when you step up in the pocket, keep that head up because a lot of college quarterbacks like to run. Defenses know that. You step up in the pocket, they're going to come out of their break in coverage, and all of a sudden your receiver comes wide open. It's an easy pass and catch like he did on that last play. That's something we see Grayson McCall, the quarterback for Coastal, do a lot too. A lot.
This time it's Jared Wilson who takes the handoff. Third down coming up for South Alabama. So Kenny had a few calls here. Third down. About six here, try to keep this drive alive. South Alabama two for five on third down tonight. Jared Wilson still in there as the back. We really haven't seen Trotter do much running. He has the ability, though. He doesn't have time there. Taken down for the third time tonight, and this time C.J. Brewer. Yeah, Brewer, Jeffrey Gunter, who you mentioned. It was a jailbreak, and I mean, if you're Desmond Trotter, you get back, it's really a three-step drop by the time that third step hits the ground, you look up and you just got three black jerseys all over you. And it was a little stunt. Gunter started outside, came inside, and they just all met at the quarterback, Desmond Trotter. Diego Wajardo on to attempt the 42-yarder. And it's good. Both all of South Alabama's points have come off the leg of Diego Wajardo. It's 14 to six, Coastal. MLS Decision Day is tomorrow, the regular season finale with all 26 teams playing. The Eastern Conference matches start at 3.30 Eastern, while the West starts at 6.30 Eastern. 3.30 Pacific will have the Union Revs on ABC with Philly looking to lock up the top seed in the East. We'll also have coverage of the most important matches on ESPN Plus, so download that app or go to ESPNPlus.com. Courtney Lyle, UMass Hall of Famer, Reedy Angolia with you here from Conway, South Carolina, checking in on the number 15 team in the nation, Coastal Carolina, who just held South Alabama to its second field goal of the night. I mean, good job by South Alabama getting down there, but against this team that's averaging over 40 points a game, you need touchdowns. So Coastal will try to run this thing out and get a little extra yards, but South Alabama's defense has something to say about that. We'll see Coastal start off things at their own 19-yard line when we come back. A couple of personnel notes to keep you aware of for the South Alabama defense. The starting defensive end, Jeremiah Littles, is out, along with the outside linebacker coach and cornerbacks coach. All three are not available in what South Alabama says is due to illness. That's and, all they can tell yeah, us. Yeah, and Littles is definitely a blow to the defense. He's a player that's played every game the last two years, very experienced, a 50-year senior defensive end. So that was uh, definitely a player they're going to miss tonight. So they have asked Charles Coleman to step up there. Jamal Hicken, Hickbottom to step up also in that spot. Here's Coastal Carolina up 14 to six in the second quarter. Grayson McCall going to the air. And the pass intended for Cameron Brown, but couldn't get, get back inside the field enough to grab it. Yeah, Cam Brown, the grad transfer, he's great size at wide receiver. 6'3", 220 pounds, and had a big game last week and has really stepped up in the wide receiver role. Second and 10. McCall pitches it out. And Marable is dropped. Yeah, Keith Gallman, exceptional job coming from that safety spot down that alley. Smelling it out to make that tackle on C.J. Marable. Exactly what you want to do from that safety spot. You see him right in the middle of the field. Great recognition. Come downfield and make the tackle on the elusive running back. Remember, South Alabama saw the triple option from Georgia Southern so they're, last they're week. They're used to it. <laughs> yeah, this defense is used to it. Isaiah Likely in motion, number four in black for Coastal. You don't see many three and outs from this offense. This will be big for the South Alabama defense. McCall avoids the hit, but sails, sails one past Cameron Brown, and it'll be fourth down second time tonight. We've seen Coastal punt. Yeah, and, you know, before we went to commercial, you saw Steve Campbell, the head coach, South Alabama, and then you see the defensive coordinator, Greg Stewart, trying to get their team pumped up, and 
they, they got a little momentum now. Good three and out there, and they're going to get excellent field position here after this punt. Colin Lacey is back to return the punt from Charles Overson. They think it hit the player for South Alabama. You could hear the bench yell, jump on it, jump on it. They're not calling it on the field, but replay has the ability to look at this. I thought it hit a coastal player, actually. We'll get a look at it here. And number six, I think, is Devin Rocket for South Alabama. Yeah, and you're right. It hit the hand of the coastal player. It's a first touch right there. It's Jordan Morris. Yeah. So they knew it hit someone. They just figured out maybe it hit a South Alabama player. It did really not. Really the ball was illegally touched by the kicking team. First down at this location. Yeah, so when he says he legally touched, that's what it means. As soon as it hit the, the coastal player there, that's an illegal touch. So the ball actually goes right back to that spot. So even better for South Alabama. Time out on the field. So South Alabama will try to get in the end zone for the first time tonight when we come back. Myrtle Beach, all about the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. If you don't leave with some beef jerky in an old-timey photo, <laughs> did you even come to Myrtle Beach? Got to prove it, right? <laughs> well, South Alabama is uh, pushing them here. They've been in the red zone twice, scored on both, but a chance to go down and score here. This game definitely not out of reach for the Jaguars. Trotter over the middle. It's Jalen Wayne for the first down. Yeah, good route by Wayne. No safety in the middle field. Let's run a skinny post. Trotter puts it right on him, and they're going with a little tempo here. Here's Carlos Davis. Spins and picks up maybe an extra yard. Second down coming for South Alabama. And I said early when this game started, South Alabama had to stay in this game early. Don't let Coastal Carolina get out ahead of them early, and they've done a nice job after being down and giving up the two early touchdowns to Coastal Carolina. Done an excellent job. A score here would go a long way before half. Carlos Davis, a much bigger hole there. You know, we've been talking about the South Alabama offensive line. They've been challenging them. What do you think so far tonight? I think they've been playing good. I mean, way better than they have been. And yeah. again, Steve Campbell said, I'm challenging that unit. And we talked about uh, Jacob Shoemaker, 77. Getting back into play at the 73, Hayden Merchants getting reps. So they've rotated a couple guys, and they haven't been healthy. And offensive line is one of those positions where you have to be cohesive, cohesive as one unit. And it looks like they're playing much better tonight. Trotter gets hit as he releases the ball, and it comes a little short behind Jalen Wayne, passing complete. And that's the one-on-one -on -one matchup you want on the outside, but Trotter just took a hit and had to release the ball before he wanted to. The ball comes up short, and you just see too much pressure. It's Gunter off that right side once again, and just a good hit on Trotter, and the ball just kind of floats on him. He can't get it out there, but they're in that tweener land here, Courtney, so you're going to go for it. Fourth and three, they've got Carlos Davis in. Yeah, instead of try a 50-yard field goal, you're going to go for it here. Trent Tyre moves over. And Trotter flips it out to him. Tyre working hard to reach for that first down. He didn't get it. He's about yeah, a half short. A yard short. The extra effort won't pay off this time. Now they may measure. I mean, from here it didn't look like he got it, but we'll see. Yeah, no, I didn't think he got it. Good defensive stand there. I mean, the big tight end, Tyre, he... he Survived the first hit. He's going to get hit, and then he stays on his feet and watch him just fighting. And, and the, the safety, Brandon Matz, is just trying to hold on for dear life. And you see, he got a pass to 30, but he had to get it all the way to the 29 yard line. That's where the first down marker was. And Steve Campbell's fighting, but you know, I could tell by where that marker was. He needed to get to the 29, and he clearly didn't get there. So Grayson McCall will shut up, set up shop on his own 30 with 2.29 until the half. McCall looking to the near side. It's Javon Hiley over the middle. Falls forward over the 50-yard line. 
Good quick throw that time to Hiley. And, and the thing I, I really like is he gets it to his receivers, and they can always run after the catch. A good reverse back outside by Hiley, pick up an extra five, six yards after the reception. It's a 19 yard pickup. Coastal working at almost midfield. Grayson McCall looking at him again, almost the exact same route for Javon Hiley and another first down. Uh, it wasn't almost exactly the same route. It was the exact same route. Just a little skinny post inside. You know, they, they, they're going to show option here. That freezes the backers. You see how the backers step up, and that just gives a really clear window for Grayson McCall to, to throw the, the ball to Javon Hiley. Executed nicely. This time picks up 21 yards. First and 10 from the South Alabama 29. McCall's going to run it. Grayson McCall has the first down, and he's tripped up at the 15. Yeah, that's another thing you don't see him do a lot is slide. And usually when you get out there, you know, you want to save those quarterbacks, but he did a good job picking up the first down and then getting down where he doesn't take a big hit. But he's going to scan the field right to left, and then he sees the green grass. He knows where he needs to get to the first down and gets tackled, but he avoids a big hit. First and 10 from the Jaguars, 15. The call this time. Dumps it off. It's Isaiah Likely, the tight end. Yeah, and that's where the big tight end. Catch that ball, square the shoulders. You see him kind of upset. Square the shoulders and get upfield. Pick up four or five yards. He tried to bounce that outside. Good job by that Jaguars defense closing in on him, making that First tackle for a minimal out. game. Carolina. This would be a 30-second timeout. Please reset the game clock to 52 seconds. Five, two seconds. So Grayson McCall with plenty of time to work with on the other side of this timeout. Of course, Coastal Carolina sits at the top of the Sun Belt standings, the top of the East. They are 4-0 in conference play after being picked to finish dead last. Well, and this is the, the big one is App State in a couple weeks, but they can't look past Troy next year. They can't look past the second half of this game. But yeah, I tell you, when you're picked last, and they were picked dead last because they only had 13 points. Uh, Louisiana Monroe had 20, and they haven't won a game this year. So, nope. listen, the players saw that. You know, they see the press clippings. And you a little chip on your shoulder and say, all right, we're going to get after it. And uh, they have. His offensive line's got a little chip on its shoulder, too. Yep. Not the tallest group of offensive linemen and, or the biggest. And I should say, getting back to Isaiah Likely, the tight end number four, I love him. He's a great matchup problem. He's been playing with a lower body injury this year. It's one of those injuries that's not going to get any worse, but it's very painful, and he's just got to try to tolerate it until the offseason. McCall rolling to his right, throws it down at the feet of Javon Hiley, but he's able to make the grab anyway to the nine-yard line. Excellent hands there, low ball. Holly just reaches down, plucks it. And gets it again to a manageable third down here, a third and four with 30 seconds left and a half and running. And the call throws it behind Hiley that time, and he's tripped up in the end zone. Well, he went back shoulder, did McCall, and he threw that low and away, but I think he threw it lower than he wanted to. Just didn't release off his hands, but I think he definitely wanted to throw it back shoulder. It just fired it too low, and it goes incomplete. When you throw that back shoulder correctly, I mean, you can't defend it. It is just, it's a nightmare for a defensive back, and that one goes harmlessly into the ground. So Massimo Bescardi on to attempt the 26-yarder. And it's good. More points on the board for Coastal Carolina. They're up 17-6 with 18 seconds until the break. Yeah, but a, a huge, very big deal there by that South Alabama defense, keeping them out of the end zone, holding them to three, get into the locker room, 17-6, regroup. But you're obviously well you're, you're still in this ball game. Coastal Carolina in a tough one here, but uh, they've got a couple of more challenges remaining. Like you said, they'll play a Troy team who played Georgia Southern pretty close today. And 
see the 55% at App State, 87% at Texas State. Now, 81% win chance uh, against Liberty. This was going into the day. I think right. you just said that. Liberty with a huge win at Virginia Tech. You know, uh, they were getting, I think, 17 points. I mean, that's how much Virginia Tech was favored, and they win that game outright. So that's going to change. But, boy, a few tough ones for sure left for Coastal Carolina if they want to try to run the table here. Coastal at 6-0. and oh. Trying to extend that most win since joining the FBS. If they can get a win here. Well, it's time now for our Fansville College Football Update, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. The Pac-12 is back, but not so fast. Four games put on hold, or it's four games played today. We had a couple of games put on hold in the Pac-12. Yeah, I mean, pretty stringent, you know, rules there so that's what happens absolutely and we were talking about that liberty virginia tech game just crazy if you didn't see the ending virginia tech actually blocked a liberty field goal and ran it back for a touchdown but when they went back and looked virginia tech had called timeout so they gave the ball back to liberty and they got to kick the field goal to win the game yeah and justin fuente when asked about it after the game was just you know, sick to his stomach felt horrible it happens but uh you know Kudos to Liberty for, you know, no one thought Liberty had a chance in that game. And everyone said, no, oh, they haven't played anyone this year. Well, they go into Blacksburg and they get a huge win. So what does Desmond Trotter in South Alabama do with 13 seconds? Quick pass out to the flat, and Colin Lacey is there. Yeah, you don't take any big chances downfield, so you're going to get a, a strip sack or, or a pick six. They're going lateral, get it to their receiver, see if they can break a tackle. Gave it a couple second, of chances. Sorry, South Alabama. This will be a 30-second timeout. So now out at the 38-yard line with seven seconds, you can take a shot down the field and see if you can maybe get into the field goal range with, with one timeout left. Seven seconds, and it's, it's going to be tough. Give it a try. Try to maybe pick up some points here. Look, Steve Campbell, it's no secret, he's very confident in Desmond Trotter's ability. He's confident with him out there. He's and a little bit more mobile than Chance Lovertich, who we've, Lovertich, who we've seen yeah. come in this season. And, and I think the mobility of Trotter is what he likes, and that, that helps out an offensive line that's kind of trying to get to better. But the other player he, he told us about in the meetings was, was the kicker, right? Uh, Diego Guajardo uh, playing great as well. He's Got a 54-yarder, so he's got a good foot. Yeah, that's his career high hit it against Georgia Southern last week. And Trotter's on the move. Didn't have anybody to throw it to. And I don't think he got out of bounds before the clock ran out. Yep, that's going to be our halftime score. Coastal Carolina trying to keep that record perfect. They lead 17 to 6 here at halftime in Conway. That's the end of the first half. Coach football presented by Dr. Pepper. Coastal Carolina up over South Alabama, 17 to six as we get set for the third quarter here in Conway, South Carolina. Courtney Lyle alongside a UMass Hall of Famer, Rini and Golia. And South Alabama's done a pretty good job of limiting explosive plays for this Coastal Carolina team. And I think that's huge because we're accustomed to seeing big touchdowns, big throws by Grace McCall. Excellent job, they've kept this game close. Nice job in the first half for South Alabama. Yeah, and South Alabama was able to hold Coastal to a field goal on its last drive. You take a look at the first half numbers. Coastal is going to get the ball to start the second half. But you hit on it. You look at the numbers. Coastal, pretty good, 246 total yards. But the explosive play that, that we've come to see week in and week out, the, the 40, 50-yard touchdown pass, a long run. South Alabama's done a nice job, has eliminated that. Now, the only thing offensively, a couple field goals. Obviously, they need to, to finish their drives off with touchdowns, but they're right in this game as we start the second half. Jamie Chadwell's crew already bowl eligible with that win last week over Georgia State. They sit at 6-0. and Meanwhile, South Alabama is trying to climb up there to get bowl eligible. They're 3-3 three and three overall. And we talked about their improvement from last year, only two wins. Uh, playing much better this season. Okay. 
Postal set to receive Shamari Jones and Javon Hiley back. And it falls into the hands of Jones. Past the 30, he goes. Shamari Jones falls down at the 45-yard line. That's a great place to start for Coastal Carolina, who was able to get a couple of, couple of touchdowns early on in this one. Yeah, and then Shamari Jones, who just had that nice return on fourth down, powers it through for the touchdown, and then South Alabama answers with a field goal, and then Coastal comes back, the little jet sweep, the, the toss to C.J. Marable for the score, and then that defense at Coastal Carolina really got after Desmond Trotter with a couple of big sacks. Kennedy Roberts right there, got one. Teron Jackson playing well in that first half and really got after the South Alabama quarterback. Jones is in it, running back again, pushes forward. We were talking at halftime about C.J. Marable has been that, that big back for them, even though Coastal has several different options, but he hasn't had a ton of touches, only three touches tonight. Yeah, and so they've been going to some other backs, and that time right there is Jones got that carry. I like the, the angriness that he ran with there as a big back. I'd like to see that. And Maribel back in the game. Seven career 100-yard games for C.J., Second and five here for the Chanticleers. And Marable gets it, picks up a yard. What did you think of this coastal offense in the first half? You know, I just think you look at their numbers, you say, yeah, it was all right, but they haven't clicked. And I guess we're a little spoiled because it's an offense that averages 40.3 points a game. So, again, credit South Alabama limiting that big play um, in, in the first half, at least, for Coastal Carolina. And I just don't think... To me, it doesn't look like Grayson McCall is clicking on all cylinders as well, um, but we'll see how he plays in the second half. And he has been a little banged up this season, for sure. Yeah, missed the Georgia Southern game with an injury. Third down here for the Shauna Clears. Grayson McCall will call his own number, and that should be a first down. Well, and they gave him a good spot, because as soon as you start the slide, is where the ball gets spotted, and he's lucky because he, I, I guess he started it right at the 45. We'll take a look here, and replay can look at it. Wow, that is that is close. Um, they gave him the benefit of the doubt. So usually, and he knows this, when you're going for a first down, you want to go head first to make sure you get the first down, and that's what South Carolina's talking about. Steve Campbell's yelling at the referee, but he wants, he wants the replay booth to look at it because he thinks he initiated the slide about a half a yard before the yard to gain, which was the 45-yard line. So we'll see. Replay's going to look at this. Every little yard is so important when you're facing a Coastal Carolina team who averages over 441 yards per game. So let's see when he starts the baseball really slide. The, the runner made a first down on that so, play. Previous play is under further To review. me, from there the is no charge timeout for South Alabama. As the referee gets done giving the explanation. To me, Courtney, when he started the slide, he's about a half yard short of the 45 yard line. And that's why I think as a quarterback, it's, it's important to know on a play like that, you need to go head first to get that first down die for it because again it, and it, it, it's a rule that's put in to protect the quarterback as soon as that slide starts the second it starts the ball is dead and so let's this is a great look here we'll see where the ball is right when he starts right there he starts he's a half yard short great job by the crew there I think that camera angle right there is what replay will use to reverse this they're going to move that ball back in my estimation a half a yard and it's going to be fourth down and the decision time for Jamie Chadwell Andy Vervilius is the one looking at this, the replay official tonight. Our white hat is Marshall Lewis. And uh, I, I would imagine this will be a, should be a quick review. And a little, little tip, a little inside baseball or inside football, if you will. When you see that back judge standing next to the referee and he's got a pen and paper out. After review, the runner did not reach the line to gain. The quarterback started his slide at the 46-yard line. The ball will be placed at that location. It's fourth down and one yard to go. Yeah, you know, I thought he was a little closer. Yeah. <laughs> they moved him back the full yard, but it's the right call. And, and I think Jamie Chadwell, I think this is an attitude thing with his his offense. He tells him once again, like he did in fourth and goal at the goal line, let's go get this first down. Let's keep this drive, drive alive. And 
I think it's very important for offenses, for psyches, when you get the ball to start a second half, to march down there and score, especially an offense that's been as productive as the Chanticleers have been this season. Coastal one for one on fourth down tonight. I know he's short. So a big opportunity here for South Alabama to try to get a stop and get the ball back. They've got Reese White in behind Grayson McCall. One wide receiver on either side. White pushing a second push effort. I think he's going to be short. Yeah, he is. He didn't get it. That's a great defense by the Jaguars. And what a momentum shift here for South Alabama to get that stop to start the third quarter. Yeah, you want to talk about winning at the point of attack. Look how low that defensive line came up. And look at the linebackers fly up there. And I don't even need to look at the number. I know it's for Riley Cole. Because once that defensive line came off the ball and took blockers off of Coastal Carolina, the linebackers had a free shot. I talked about Riley Cole's speed when we started this game, and he shot through there like a cannon to hit Reese White, and a huge stop for the South Alabama defensive unit. Gives the ball to Desmond Trotter, and the South Alabama offense, there's a flag that's come down on the far side. It's a hold and asking Jamie Chadwell what he wants to do. I'm assuming he's going to back him up here. Go first and 20. Personal foul. Tripping. Offense. Number 71. 15-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Actually, it wasn't a hold. Personal foul, so obviously taking that. I love the big offensive line. That was Ankerson right there. The center kind of put his arms up. Like, who tripped who? Ankerson, the leader of that group. Coaches told us everything uh, that they, they want a South Alabama player to be was a walk-on, earned a scholarship. Now he's on a couple of the watch lists. Lots of room to go here for South Alabama. They give it to Carlos Davis. Picks up about three. Teddy Gallagher. Little linebacker. And there for the stop. You know, they were talking about him, just saying how smart he was as that defensive leader. Makes all the calls, makes all the defensive calls when they come in from Chad Staggs. Out of California, spent a couple of seasons in junior college before making the transition over to Coastal. Troster, Trotter releases it out, firing Jalen Tolbert's way. And third down coming up. And a good route by Tolbert, come back to make that catch to... Cut it, cut it in half a little bit. Still third and long here, but at least you got a fighting chance here at third and 13. South Alabama is two for seven on third down tonight. And this is where they have been able to get pressure on Trotter tonight on these third down and in, in long situations. Trotter's feeling it. The ball comes loose, too. He coughed it up. C.J. Brewer came away with it. Ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down. And, and Courtney, it was Teron Jackson again off that side. If, if my eyes are correct, we'll see when we get the replay. And I tell you what, on third down, they are just pinning their ears back, and they are getting after Desmond Trotter, and they've done it all night. And see... Coach Campbell coaching him up, and it's one thing to take the sack. You gotta protect the football right there. But I tell you what, they're just getting after right side of the screen. Watch, he's gonna come in, and yes, it is number nine. Ball gets stripped, a strip sack for Teron Jackson and CJ Brewer, the other defensive end, is there for the fumble recovery. I mean, the coaches can't say enough good things about Teron Jackson. 
He leads this team in sacks with three and a half sacks, and he's the coaching staff says he comes to work every day like he has zero sacks and that he's not starting. Yeah, and he's the all-time sack leader for Coastal Carolina. Had 21 and a half coming in to this game. He's added on to that. You know, he gets double teamed a lot. So in some games this year, you haven't really said his, his name a lot. They're not double teaming him tonight, and he's having a well of a ball game. We also got to help give him some credit for Gerard Clark and how well he's come along on that defensive line. He's helped him out. Grayson McCall now in trouble, and the ball pops out. He fumbled it. And South Alabama's going to take it right back. Nick Mobley was there. Pocket collapse. It's a fumble recovered by the defense. First down. Call tries to step up. Nowhere to go. Timeout on the field. He can't hang on to the ball. And a great job by the South Alabama defense. They give it up. One play later, they get it right back. South Alabama offense on the other side. Well, Cam Newton and the Patriots are at MetLife Stadium to take on Sam Darnold and the Jets in our Week 9 Monday Night Football. New England has won 8 straight and 10 of 11 against New York. You can see it at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Whew, that was almost picked off. We've had back-to-back -back turnovers for these teams. Yeah, we almost had three, right? Yes. Three plays, three turnovers. I, I, listen, I like the call, though. Take a shot, stretch the field, let Trotter air this thing out to one of his big receivers, Tolbert, once again. And good job by Braden Matz. Double coverage, almost came up with the interception. South Alabama getting their fourth fumble recovery of the season to start this drive, but it came after they fumbled the ball in Coastal Carolina, took it over for one play. And a, a, a game that was just flying in the first half. Just kind of off to a rocky start here with, with both these units here in this third quarter. It's because you said it was flying in the first half at halftime. I did. <laughs> I jinxed it. Third and 10 here for Desmond Trotter and the Jags. It's Carlos Davis. Can he get around the edge? I think they're going to mark this. It's going to be real close. It's hard to tell on that far side. I thought he was short, but he gave him, the headline judge gave him the spot because you see the nose of the football on the 41 yard line. That's a first down. We've got a great look at here. Good call, third 10. Obviously, something they like. They're running the short side of the field. Good fighting. And so, what, the, what he said was he wasn't down. But boy, I don't think he got to that yard marker at all. Yeah. I don't even think he was close. I thought he was going to be at least a yard boy, short. Boy, they're going to replay this because he was on top of a defender. That's Ruling legal. Ruling on the field is that the runner made the line to gain for a first down. Yeah, and he clearly didn't. Previous he was, plays under further He was review. on top of a defender, which is good. He right. rolls over. He gained an extra yard, yard and a half. But you see the ball and elbow hit. To me, from that look, he was a yard, half yard short. We'll get a great look at it. Again, he's got to get to the 41-yard line. You're going to see him get tackled here. He's going to roll over. He's still on him. But right here, his elbow hits. You see that right arm come down? Yeah, clearly as short. As soon as that right arm hits the ground, the play's dead, and it's where the ball is. Right here, he's up. He's good. He's on the def he's on the defender. That's legal. He can still go watch. The hand's good. The hand's good. Watch, watch. Boom, right there. Once the forearm's down, it's where that ball is. The ball's in his left hand, and to me, He's clearly a half yard short because he's got to get to the 41. Watch where the ball is. Hands down, ball is short. So I think it's going to be great camera work, guys. Crew's yeah. doing a great job. I think it's a good shot for replay. And much like they moved it back on the Grayson McCall slide, I think they're going to move it back there on that one. Yeah, second time we've looked at the spot here in the third quarter. After review, the runner did not reach the line to gain. The ball will be placed at the 40-yard line, fourth down and one yard to go at that location. And, and they like moving it back that whole yard because I thought it was probably a half a yard, but they got yeah. the call, right? <laughs> and they did it efficiently, too. That didn't take I any love time. That. And, yeah. that's, and that's what replay's there for. Boom, fix it. It's a big play in a game. So now it's fourth and short. Man, Trotter's running back on yeah. the field. Listen, I, I love this aggressiveness for Steve Campbell. 
you know, like a broken record. To me, this is an attitude thing. It'd be interesting to see the call. And they've had success with their running backs just powering it. Yeah, Carlos Davis is in there. That's Baker in motion. They give it to Kawan Baker. First time he's touched the ball. There's a flag on the far side as Baker picks up the first down and takes it to the 49 of Coastal. I'd like to call jet sweep. He gets to the outside. Turns the corner, but we'll have to see what the flag is. Offside. Defense. Penalty's declined. Result of the play is the first down. Hey, that's huge. You yeah. trust your guys. You go out there, you get it done. And listen, we talked about this team. They won two games last year. They've won three, much improved this year. Go get it, right? Go get it, especially in a year like this. I love that aggressiveness. And you're going to knock, knock off the 15th-ranked team at home. you got to take chances like that, and, and they succeeded. South Alabama had a chance to beat Georgia Southern last week. They dropped a catch in the end zone. This is Colin Lacey on the carry this year. Um, for South Alabama, they started 2-0 in the Sun Belt for the very first time, 3-2 for the first time in five years. And, and you can tell just by watching them tonight, they're not backing down to Coastal Carolina whatsoever. They are here, they feel they can win the game, they know they can win the game if they play up to their potential. And we'll see if they can finish this drive off with a touchdown, something they haven't been able to do tonight. They sling it out to Kawan Baker, and that is a huge loss. It's Enoch Makonzo out of Canada. And we have not called Makonzo's name at all tonight. This was the first time. He's very active, so that's a good sign. They go option, try to get, a, a, get the ball to Kawan Baker, the receiver, but Makonzo sniffs it right out. And as you said, the big loss on the play. The coaches gave him a lot of credit for the success that this defense has had this year. He's the most underrated player Makonzo is in that front seven. Pass out to the flat. This is Lacey. Steps out at the 44. So he's going to be about five yards short. It'd be interesting. To me, you went last time, you go here, no doubt about it. You're over past the 50. And really, I think the call on third down that he picked up you know, a few yards there to get it manageable, dictated to go for it here at fourth and five. They've put Terry on Avery in as the running back. Trent Tyre moves over. Trotter looking to throw. He's got Jalen Wayne. And once again, South Alabama goes for it on fourth down. They get the job done. Yeah, good route by Wayne. Soft coverage on, on fourth and five. And if they're going to play off, you put it on them quick. That's what he did. First down. Jalen Wayne, the nephew of Reggie Wayne. Good jeans there, some good wide receiver jeans there, to be specific. Desmond Trotter's got some good jeans too. His grandfather was Ozzie Newsome. Trotter will slide down. I, just, I, I love the aggressiveness that Coach Steve Campbell. And your team feeds off that, you know, in situations like that where a couple fourth downs converted here. See C.J. Brewer, this Coastal Carolina defense. They've been on the field here for a few minutes, so kind of on their heels. Back-to-back -back turnovers for each team has led to this drive for South Alabama. Carlos Davis makes it to the 31-yard line. CJ must have heard me talking yeah. about him. <laughs> makes that tackle, shaking his head. He's really the leader of that. He's the vocal leader of that defense for sure. His teammates listen to him. Good player. And you talked about it early. Gerard Clark, he's a huge influence. Him and, and Teron Jackson on kind of helping and shaping Gerard Clark. A big nose guard. Third and six. They'll look to the sideline and change it up. Trotter connects with Kawan Baker. And he's going to be short. Yeah, they tried tunnel screen, screen there. Good recognition by that coastal defense. They come off, but I'll tell you what, Baker is so athletic. He's still able to pick up some yardage. And why not? Let's try to go three for three on fourth down this drive. Love it. 
They've got to have all the confidence right now. They've already converted two fourth downs, two fourth downs on this drive. Trotter tosses it up and the pass is complete again. It's Jalen Wayne. Well, it, it, it just dawned on me that's the key because they weren't good on third down. They were getting all kinds of pressure. They just got to get the fourth down every time. They need a little more pressure on themselves, yeah. right? <laughs> and to me, it's just, you know, on, a, on fourth down, that's two plays in a row. I just thought kind of soft coverage. Receiver kind of posts, posts up in front of the defender. Trotter puts it on him. Well, coastal defense, as you said, has been out there a while now. First and 10 from the Coastal 21. South Alabama looking for the end zone for the first time today. Carlos Davis with the carry. Steps out at the 10. First and goal, he made the first man miss and that's what every good back does. It looked like, and you see you know, just how tired that defensive line is. We talked about it. It gives South Alabama credit because they're getting after it on this possession. Davis thought he had a second opportunity, but Coastal was able to get to him, KJ Johnson. Yeah, a loss there, nice job. Laconzo, just talked about him. A former free safety that moved to what they call the spur linebacker spot. It's, it's kind of a hybrid linebacker safety he's done an exceptional job there this season. He's had to do that in fall camp. Couldn't practice in the spring, was out still with that injury from last year. Trotter pulls it, tosses one up, looking for Jalen Tolbert, but he was pretty much covered up. Yeah, a lot of jaw checking out there between Derek Bush and Jalen Tolbert. Derek Bush, 23, he's a, a cornerback that they challenged this year because the front seven was playing great. They wanted more out of their corners, and the Jordan Strong seven on the other side, and Derek Bush, 23, that's great coverage. See how he turns back to the ball? He's got his left hand feeling the receiver, and that outside hand, that right hand, he knocks it away. Now, easy with the, easy with the jaw jacking because you don't want to pick up a cheap penalty, but corners, corners are known to talk. The receivers will give it back to him as well. Third and goal. Never changes it. Avery will flip to the other side. Finds Baker in the flat. Can he find his way into the end zone? Steps out at the one. Well, I mean, it's fourth and one. You got to try to go four for four, right? And, and finish it off with a touchdown again. Field goals are not, he's not gonna beat this team. And, and just look at Baker, I mean, makes the first man miss, which was Teddy Gallagher. And then look at the power from the wide receiver position to get it down to the one yard line, he almost scores. Great block there on the outside as well by Kate Sutherland. So Trotter runs out. We almost wonder if Coastal looked a little out of sorts defensively. They would take a timeout, let them wrestle a little this bit. This is Kawan not. Baker out of the shotgun. And he keeps it, powers his way forward. Did he get in? They're going to say no. no. South Alabama converted three fourth downs on this drive, but they couldn't get number four to get into the end zone. Yeah, three for four on fourth down is great. Ruling on the field that the runner was short. Turns over on downs, first down. But the one they needed the most to get it in for six, called short. Wow. The field, the Thunder did not A reach gutsy the goal line. drive, Previous but is under further review. Coastal Carolina stands strong on fourth and goal. Well, Chad Staggs, the defensive coordinator for Coastal, has got to be pretty happy about how his group ended that drive. They did review the spot, and the ruling on the field stood. So South Alabama short on fourth and goal. And there's no doubt that defense was gassed. You see they were out there seven minutes and 23 seconds. They gave up three fourth down conversions, but the fourth they stopped. 29, the middle linebacker Silas Kelly is the initial guy that hits Kawan Baker. But then big Gerard Clark, 15, all 350 pounds of them has Baker 
by the waist, pulls him back. The ball does not break the plane of the goal line. And it's a big stop for that Coastal Carolina defense. Now you got to give some credit to Gerard Clark. If he doesn't come back with a renewed mindset yeah. this year after the pandemic and really got after it in the weight room with Teron Jackson and C.J. Brewer, maybe he doesn't pull big Kawan Baker back. South Alabama converted three fourth downs on that drive, but couldn't get the last one to punch it in. McCall gets it out to Isaiah Likely, the tight end. Give him a little breathing room. We talked about Isaiah earlier, just you know, hampered with that lower body injury. He, he's a matchup nightmare when he's healthy. He's just kind of fighting through this season. Hopefully he will get better as this season progresses. It seems like a lifetime ago, but the last time Coastal had the ball, Grayson McCall was sacked for just the third time this season. And fumbled him. He really hasn't been through a lot of adversity this year. Only thrown the one interception. I believe that's his only fumble of the year as well. Tosses it up to C.J. Marable. And that's huge because he gets a first down. When I played back in the day, I'm old, if you were pinned inside your five, the first goal of the offense was to get one first down, at least get one first down, get off that goal line, and they go with that little jet sweep where they tossed him where he scored a touchdown earlier in the game. And Marable does a good job turning it up, getting that first down. First and 10 from their own 12th. Here's Shamari Jones. Falling forward. And uh, you, you speak of your old playing days, Rini. You were actually uh, had a teammate who's coaching in this game. I do. So big Bill Dirk. And so obviously that's me, the running back. And that's big Bill Dirk. You see that big left hand up there. He's the offensive line coach here at Coastal Carolina. He was an All-American guard. He's 6'5". Well, being nice, Bill's about 315, but that's 27 years ago. My body only felt a smidge as good as he did back then today. And there's big Dirk. He's taken over the offensive line this year, worked with the tight ends in the past. Off a of play action. Cameron Brown diving into the pass and makes the grab. Nice catch by Cam Brown and just get back to that offensive line. Talking about the job they've done, a couple guys opted out this year as well because of COVID. So doing a nice job and you see Cam Brown, good concentration on the hands and you know the offensive line, Sam Thompson, the center, a lot of national recognition. Willie Lampkin, 57, the left guard, he's a true freshman. Kid was playing in high school last year at Lakeland High School. They really recruited him to play center. They didn't think he was going to have to play this year. And he's starting at left guard right next to big Sam Thompson. And Trey Carter at right guard playing lights out in the middle there. C.J. Marable coughs the ball up. Another fumble for Coastal Carolina. And guess who takes it away? Riley Cole. And we talked about Riley Cole had to have a big game. He didn't make the hit, but he was there to catch that fumble. Ruling on the field, it's a fumble recovered by the That's defense. uncharacteristic on the by C.J. Marable. Good run, just got to secure the ball. He's going to take the big hit, pops in the air. Riley Cole is there for the recovery. Great job, South Alabama defense. You see Dwayne Betts over there, number 27 for the Jags, with a huge hit to pop the ball loose. and. South Alabama able to recover it here and set up a drive in coastal territory. Carlos Davis on the carry, and a flag comes in. Center judge with the call. See what he's got. Holding. South Alabama. Holding, offense, number 66, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. That's Brian Ankerson, the, se the center. But take a look at this hit from Betts. Exactly what you want to do, free safety, come down that alley, boom, I mean, right there. Head across the bow, eat the football, puts his face mask right on it. Ball pops in the air and Riley Cole is there to recover. That's exactly where you want to come down the alley as a free safety. 
So Trotter goes back to work after they were stopped on fourth and goal, and he is tripped up by Teron Jackson. And Jackson's a 6'2", 265, 270-pound defensive end. But you just see his speed. Watch, he's going to spin right here back outside to get the Trotter. And Trotter thinks he's going to be able to get around him, but defensive end says, nope, he's having a heck of a night tonight with this Teron Jackson. A preseason all Sun Belt selection. Seven TFLs on the season. As Davis gets a little shifty on that far side, crosses the 50. And they've had success tonight with those bubble screens. Get it out there quick. To, that time to Colin Lacey, a true freshman that they really like. Think he's a dynamic athlete. You want to get him the ball in space. And they do a nice job blocking on the perimeter as well. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. South Alabama looking to punch it in the end zone. Can they finish it on this drive? Fourth quarter coming up from Conway. Fifteen minutes left here in Conway. We get set for the start of the fourth quarter. Coastal Carolina leading 17 to 6. But the Shauna Clears, Jamie Chadwell's crew has turned it over twice. South Alabama is going to try to capitalize on that here after they recovered the fumble. They're at midfield right now. Courtney Lyle, Rini, and Golia with you. Trotter under pressure. Runs up the middle of the field and is tripped up at the 41. So he got it to fourth and six or seven here. We know what Steve Campbell thinks about fourth down, so I don't even think he's hesitating. He's going for it. They were three for four last drive, and they're going in a hurry here. This one fourth and eight. Trotter slings it over the middle and threw it behind his intended target, Colin Lacey. And he had Lacey open, but he had to throw it again, a count before he wanted to. He got hit from behind by the defensive end, Jeffrey Gunter. He actually plays the bandit position right there, coming off the left side. And yeah, it just gets hit as he's releasing it, and the ball falls to the ground because Colin Lacey had a step on the safety. And actually, it was the linebacker with the safety coming up. But again, that defensive line, defensive front, if you will, Jeffrey Gunter, that time gets to Desmond Trotter. South Alabama was three for four on fourth down. Now three of six tonight on fourth down. Could not convert their last two. The first of those was a fourth and goal. So now Grayson McCall comes back out to lead this Coastal Carolina offense. And he hands it off to Shamari Jones, who's got himself a first down, and he's still going. That's just a little zone read. As Grayson McCall puts it in the belly. Shamari Jones says, you take it, big fella. Good run into the outside. You see, they've been excellent in the fourth quarter. 73 points scored this season, which leads the FBS. And they kind of they put the foot on the gas when they get in the fourth. Coastal Carolina already bowl eligible for the first time in school history. They marked that off their goals list last week, sitting at 6-0. and And McCall threw it in the dirt at Reese White's feet. Yeah, one of the big defensive linemen, I believe, right there. You see big number 30, Charles Coleman. I think he might have got his hand up, got a piece of it. He's starting in place of Jeremiah Littles, who we said was out this game with an illness. Now, second and 10 coming from the South Alabama 39. Shamari Jones just took a defender and ran over him to the 33. Yeah, and that's what you want. That's what you want, your big 220 pounder. You see the down block by the offensive line, full back tight end type of H-back position, leading out in front, and then your big back just lowers his pads and gets in there and picks up five, six yards. Gets to the third and four here. Jones was able to punch it in from a yard out on Coastal Carolina's first drive of this game. The Shauna clears one for six on third down. McCall pulls it, he'll keep it himself. 
The first down is his, and he takes it to the 20. Can't sleep on the call, he can run too. Yeah, that's just a good read again. Little zone read, puts it in, watches, and then sees the defenders collapse on the running back. He pulls it as the hole to the left side. Knows where he needs to get to get the first down, and does so. 13 pit yard pickup for Grayson McCall to the South Alabama 20 yard line. He goes first and 10. Pulls it away from Jones. Now throwing on the move. Has a man, but out of bounds. He was looking for Sam Denmark. And Ryan Melton right there in coverage. Big shove on Denmark to make sure that foot didn't come down in bounds. Denmark makes the catch, just can't get that foot in. Get a good look at it here. Yep, just can't get it down. Good job by Melton out there. So now it's second and 10, same spot. Still at the South Alabama 20. Reese White is the back. Javon Hiley is lined up on the near side at wide receiver. Reese White will power forward. He's not afraid of contact. He's a very physical runner in this group. He is, and you know, talk to the coaches, specifically Newland Isaac, about him, because he's 185 pounds, but they really like running him between the tackles because he runs so hard, and he's not, not afraid of contact, does not shy away from contact. Very physical runner. There's Newland, co-offensive coordinator, but works specifically with the running backs as well. McCall looked quickly to his right and decided to run. And he'll be short of the first down. Well, that was a called quarterback draw, but it's a nice job by the South Alabama defense to recognize it and collapse in. Only a couple of yards picked up by Grayson McCall, and it's fourth down. That's Willie Korn to the right, right there. The other co-offensive coordinator, former quarterback, played quarterback for Jamie Chadwell, so. Yeah, North Greenville. He said he's the reason that uh, Grayson McCall doesn't have a lot of liberty to, to, <laughs> change, play, plays. to change plays in the line of scrimmage. He ruined it years he ago. He abused that power. Massimo Biscardi on to attempt the 30-yarder. And it's good. Coastal Carolina up here in the fourth quarter. They lead it 20 to six. Well, we were talking a little bit about North Greenville. You see Willie Korn there on the right of your screen. Chad Staggs, the defensive coordinator on the left. They were both at North Greenville, excuse me, North Greenville with Jamie Caldwell. But of course, Willie Korn was the quarterback. Chad Staggs was the defensive coordinator. So you see that a lot. It's not unusual to see a staff stick together. Yeah, and Willie Korn, he did a joke about it. He said, Grayson McCall does not get the leeway he should because I'm the quarterback coach, and I, I did things I wasn't supposed to do when I was a quarterback for Jamie Chadwell, so it's pretty funny. But he was also complimentary of how Jamie Chadwell handles his quarterbacks, because remember, Coach Chadwell was a quarterback, too. Yeah. So he said he would always ask me, you know, I want you to be honest. Are you comfortable with this play? If not, we're not going to do it. We'll work on it next week. And he loves that Grayson McCall can brush things off. Yes. Like you're you're going to have mistakes. You're going to have adversity. It's like, okay, it happens. Let's get back in the game. And that's a similar thing that we heard about Desmond Trotter, the quarterback for South Alabama, that even though he's only a sophomore, he's not taking things personally. He can shake things off really well. And right now, he's got to shake everything off that's happened in the past and throw a play down the field. South Alabama's got to get in the end zone. What a catch by Jalen Wayne. Yeah, yeah, take a shot right there on first down. We've seen it a couple times tonight. This is the first time that they complete it. Jalen Wayne, just right down the middle of the field, deep post pattern. Good ball by Trotter. Look how he goes up, spots the ball, and brings it in. A 43-yard pickup. They take it to the 37. Trotter again to the air he goes. This time Jalen Tolbert, the other Jalen, once in on the action. And that ball came out. I don't know if it came out from hitting the ground. 
And they're going to call it a fumble. So we'll have wow. To, yeah, we'll have to get a look. You see the beanbag on the ground. They definitely on the field is a catch. Definitely called it a fumble. fumble you see Steve Campbell's defense. First down. Well, and the Coastal interesting Carolina. thing is, you see how fast they went. I know there's probably people yelling at the TV at home. It almost looked like on the great catch Jalen Wayne had when he hit the ground, the ball may have actually hit the ground and moved a little bit. Yeah. They went fast. Replay didn't get a chance to stop it. We'll sort this all back out when we come back. Coastal Carolina still leads it 20 to six early in the fourth. Another fumble for South Alabama. This one coughed up by Jalen Tolbert and Coastal Carolina able to recover. Teddy Gallagher got in on it. Yeah, great look here. The ball clearly is coming out. Enoch McConzo hits him while he's still up. That ball was coming out, and then you see Teddy Gallagher get in there. And then, of course, you got to have a little celebration, Courtney, right? Every team does it. You the, know you know what that is. The what is turnover that? cloak. The king of the south, as they say. I like the sword, right? It's the sword, is that what that is? Yeah, I like the mullet. Well, the mullet's good, too. The bleached mullet with the cloak is really a strong statement. Yeah, it looked good. It looked good. <laughs> so Coastal Carolina has another chance. We've seen three total fumbles in this game. Pass goes out to the flat quickly, and it's Reese White. And there it is. I think he newly bleached that, right? This week. Yeah, it looks a little fresher. It's got a new color job. Fresh. Silas Kelly has one. We think that Grayson McCall he's, is growing He's one. definitely growing yeah. one, yeah. He's not saying it publicly, but he is. Um, what was it um, that they called the Chanticleer Chandelier? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Marty Smith. First and ten for McCall. And it kind of made us wonder, you know, there's some notable football flows out there, if you will. Trevor Lawrence is definitely one of those. Oh, it's not a mullet, but it's a flow. It's a flow. Becca, OBJ, that's a flow. Troy Polamalu, of course. Definitely He's still flow. doing shampoo commercials. And then now that's a mullet. Mike Gundy. Yeah. And there's a player down for Coastal Carolina right now. And, oh, by the way, Jamie Chadwell said, getting ahead of himself, if they player. win the Sun Belt, the he will grow a mullet. We'll identify that player for you when we come back. Coastal leads at 26, 9.25 left in the fourth. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville, and in part by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. Well, as always, this time of year, we like to salute all of our nation's veterans, past and present, as we take a look at uh, some of the sites here, some of the courageous soldiers from around the globe. We thank you for your service and your sacrifice. It was Sam Thompson, the center, who was injured on that play. He's currently in the medical tent right now. Oh, what a spin move from Reese White to take it past the 50-yard line. Uh, and the snap, because it came from Will McDonald, a new center, was a little off. That slowed the play up. Grayson McCall does a nice job, a little low, catches it, gets outside, and you're right. Watch Reese White after this. Going to take that hit, but spin off it. And keep going to pick up that first down. Yeah, so number 66, Will McDonald, is in at center. As it's first and ten, Coastal. Donald, the redshirt freshman, was a young player there on that offensive line. McCall keeps it. He's got Reese White as an option. Doesn't need him because there's plenty of field for Grayson McCall. And I just I love the little fake, right? You get that little op option fake like you're going to go to the back and you just have that vision and you turn those shoulders and you square it up and go. Little freeze option there, right here. You could pitch it and give him a little, little head fake on, on Keith Gallman, and you just turn it up. And a big gain for Grayson McCall. Remember McCall, as we said, came in with a lot of triple option experience. He ran that in high school, so he knows it well. That's why you 
One of the reasons you see him starting as a redshirt freshman, won the job in fall camp. Fred Payton was actually out with an Achilles injury for a couple of weeks, and that's when Grayson McCall pushed himself forward into the starting job. Reese White trying to weave his way through, picks up a couple. Can't really emphasize enough. This team had spring ball, so they had 15 practices, which I think is huge. huge for Grayson yeah. McCall. And a lot of people don't realize he actually was contact traced twice in the offseason. 28 days he had to get isolated, 14 apiece. During that time, he was able to watch a lot of video, a lot of Zoom meetings, and I think that really helped him too, recognizing defenses, understanding defenses. So uh, although you don't want to be quarantined, I think he made a very useful uh, of his time in, in learning defenses and understanding things. And wasn't named the starter for this football team until the week Kansas. leading up to the Kansas game. Missed one game, that was the Georgia Southern game with a upper body injury and Coastal's gonna take a timeout here. First charge timeout, Coastal Carolina. This will be a 30 second timeout. Well, Cam Newton and the Patriots are at MetLife Stadium to take on Sam Darnold and the Jets in week nine on Monday Night Football. New England has won eight straight and 10 of 11 against the New York Jets. You can see it eight Eastern, five Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. What do you think, how do you think Trevor Lawrence I was about to ask. Green? He'll look good in green. Well, there was talk this week. What if he just demands a trade that he won't stay with the Jets? The old, who's that, Eli Manning? Eli Manning, yep. Yeah. I don't know. It's their world. We're just living in it, Courtney. That's right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> he wants Bama. The guy on the left wants Bama. I love it. Says they're going to beat. This guy got, got him over Georgia. Oh, over Bama, I see. And then over Clemson. Why not? If you're going to play a team in the national championship, might as well play another one from South Carolina, right? Sure. I was going to say, um, you think Coastal's moved past the South Carolina Gamecocks as the second best team in South Carolina? <laughs> you just want to get me in yep. trouble, don't you? Just set um, you up for failure. I, I would like to see him play. Let, I, I'm going to leave it at that. I would like to see him play. SEC teams are just too deep. I mean, that, yeah, that's, that's sure. just the reality of it. Reese White has been the featured back on this drive. And Riley Cole there again for the tackle, playing a, a nice game. We said he had to tonight, and he has for the most part. And listen, South Alabama has stayed in reach this entire game. They, they've kept Coastal from really you know, getting that run of two, three touchdowns in, in a quarter stretch that we've been accustomed to seeing. So you know, 20 to six, but you know, time's running out on them. They need to get a stop here. You gotta keep the shot to clear off the scoreboard. Coastal tonight, two of eight on third down. They've got third and eight here in the red zone. McCall looking to his right. Isaiah likely is over there, but he's just gonna have to throw it away. And that's the wise decision. Outside of the pocket, throw it away, and they're looking for the matchup with likely, and a good job in the secondary by South Alabama. Don't make a stupid play. Don't throw it back across your body. Get it intercepted. Get outside the pocket. Throw it away. Give your kicker, Biscardi, a chance to come in and put another three on the board. This will be a 27-yarder for Massimo Biscardi. He was the hero in that win over Louisiana. Hit a 40-yard field goal with four seconds left to give Coastal its first win over a ranked opponent in school history. No problem there for Massimo Biscardi and Coastal Carolina increasing its lead 23 to six here at Conway. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Dr. Pepper. Coastal Carolina hoping they're, they'll be ringing the victory bell tonight for the seventh time this season. They're up 23 to six here. About midway through, or excuse me, with six minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Chauncey. It's Chauncey right there. The Chanticleer. I think everybody should know how to say Chanticleer properly by now. You would think. <laughs> and if you don't, they'll correct you. Yeah. The Coastal Carolina came out, had two touchdowns in the first quarter. They've been held to field goals ever since, but South Alabama has not been able to find the end zone, and they've had some opportunities to do that, just couldn't capitalize on it. 
Let's take a look at the time now for the AT&T 5G best moment from tonight. And it's got to be this goal line stand. It is, and it's the fourth down stop. And South, South Alabama had was three for three. They go for it for a fourth time. Big hit by Silas Kelly, and then 15, Gerard Clark, the big nose guard, wraps up Kawan Baker, pulls it back. And that would have got in South Alabama within one score. Huge goal line stand by Coastal Carolina. And South Alabama had converted three fourth downs yeah. on that drive, but couldn't get the fourth one. And Desmond Trotter's pass incomplete. What does that do for an offense? Yeah, I mean, it's it, that was tough for South Alabama because it was a seven minute, 23 second drive. They did everything right. Coastal Carolina defensively was just on their heels and just if they could have punched it in there and got that touchdown, I think it would have been a different game, but the defense stepped up. Now if you're South Alabama offensively, Got to get a little sense of urgency going here. Got to get a, a tempo and a pace. Speed it up. Down three scores. Carlos Davis running out of room, and there's the flag. It's going to be a hold on South Alabama. Yeah. And now you're putting yourself in a hole here. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Chadwell is going to move him back here. And Derek Bush, 23, we talked about him tonight. The corner came up nicely in run support there. Holding offense, number 73. 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Now look at the South Alabama group as a whole and the job that Steve Campbell has done. I mean, he, felt, he feels like he's had some key pieces make great strides yeah. going into this season. And they got great facilities if you've never been to Mobile, Alabama. They did play their games at Lad People about 30, 40 minutes from campus. Now, brand new on-campus stadium, which is going to help recruiting immensely. Kwan Baker got the grab. He was down before the ball came loose. He's already become the all-time receiving yards leader at South Alabama tonight. Yeah, and again, they're a dangerous wide receiving core. If you're Coastal Carolina, you give them the underneath stuff. They want to run those bubble screens, those tunnel screens. That's fine. You need to come up and make sure you tackle them. Let this clock run. You're in control. Up three scores here as we approach five minutes left in the fourth quarter. South Alabama only two for 13 on third down. It's Tolbert. And they won't get this one as he takes it to the 30, about five yards short of that first down. Yeah, and normally you would punch here, but down three scores under five minutes. You're going to go for it here. They're three of six on fourth down tonight. Fourth and five for Desmond Trotter. And he just pitches it forward into the hands of the Coastal defender. Look how fast Jordan Strong came out of there with the ball. Well, he wanted that interception. They're talking about it to see if he caught it or not. Either way, it was fourth down. The ball's going back to Coastal Carolina. So we'll see if they give him the interception. We'll get a good look at it here. And it, off the left side, once again, a little stunt inside. It's Teron Jackson. They just cannot control him tonight. With an interception by the defense. First down. And hey, that's huge. Jordan Strong is tied for first in the nation with three. Now he's got four interceptions on well, the season. It looked like it hit the ground, but it might have been on the arm of Jalen Tolbert. And if it was on the arm of Jalen Tolbert, Ruling it'll be an interception. An interception by the defense. Previous plays under further review. So okay. they, they'll take a look at and this. And again, it's going back to Coastal Carolina regardless because it right. was fourth down. But it's just whether uh, DeJordan Strong adds to that interception total in the nation. But look, but look what you already see right there on that play, what DeJordan De Strong has added to this defense coming in from Juco. He's got that swagger and that short-term memory. They felt like they didn't have that at corner. Yeah, and that ball's on the ground. So they're going yeah. to reverse this. He's not going to get... His fourth interception of the year. He sold it well. He wanted yeah. it. <laughs> um, and they're actually going to gain field position because the ball is going to go back uh, to the line of scrimmage, and it'll be first down for Coastal Carolina. And again, can't say enough. Number nine, Teron Jackson, has been a terror coming off that the left side of your screen, but the right side of that, that Coastal defense, number nine. After review, the pass was incomplete. 
The ball will be placed at the previous spot, which is the 30-yard line. Turns over on downs. First down. This is going to be a great starting spot, obviously, for Coastal Carolina with 424 left in this one. But not only did Jordan Strong bring that swagger, he's pushed Derek Bush on the other side at corner to get better. He's helped him out immensely, there's no doubt. He's challenged him. You know, Jordan Strong's a leader in the secondary, playing excellent football. And because of that, you are right, Derek Bush has raised his level of play. And Chad Staggs, the defensive corner, challenged both those corners to step their play up. And they, they've answered that challenge. So McCall and company starting on the South Alabama 30. Pitch goes out to Reese White. And to the 25, he goes. And, you know, talk about Reese White a lot tonight. Usually on option, you see the backs, just, they just try to get outside, try to get outside. Not, Re not Reese White. He, he will put that foot in the ground. He will square his shoulders up and get north and south and just pick up positive yards. And I love running backs like that because they're not getting those negative runs. They're not running to the sideline and you're, you're yelling at the TV, turn it up, turn it up, and they only get a two yard. He turns it up and he picks five, six yards up on, on, on a good clip, a good basis when he's running the ball. Yeah, he's got a season high 81 rushing yards tonight. Nine carries for Reese White. Shamari Jones. Shamari Jones this time. Third down coming up for Coastal. Yeah, taking their time here. We talked a little bit about it earlier. This is some of the most adversity, if you will, that Grayson McCall has seen. Sure, and he, and he just doesn't look like himself tonight. And you're not going to have those you know, unbelievably fantastic nights every week. But you got to learn to win when you're not on your game 100%. And that's what this team is doing. So Coastal, charge, timeout. Coastal Carolina. This will be a 30 second timeout. I'll use a timeout here with third down coming up for the Chanticleers. We'll kick off your weekend. Week 9 NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern with the Countdown Crew on ESPN and the ESPN app. You can get an all-access look at Seahawks' breakout wide receiver DK Metcalf, plus Patrick Mahomes is wired for sound. They'll also have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and preview each game right up to kick off. So I got to watch because I got, you know, suckered into fantasy football once again. Oh, yeah. So. Back in there, I gotta make sure no one's hurt because there's nothing worse than starting someone. You're like, he was inactive. What yeah. are you doing? So, and I noticed too, good good to see Sam Thompson, the center, 51 for Coastal back in the game. We saw him go out earlier. Steelers fan there. There's Big Sam. Oh, my Titans lost to the Steelers. Third down here for Coastal. Good run. We've seen some solid running. That time it was Shermari Jones. Give some more credit, though, to this offensive line. And, and who we haven't called a lot tonight is really C.J. Marable, right? But again, you see Reese White and Shamari Jones stepping up. Good cut there by the big back. Third and four. Get upfield, get behind those pads, and pick up the first down. Coastal will take as much time as they can. 233 rushing yards for the Shauna Clears today. They average just under 200 a game. Jones again, another nice carry. They're going to get the win. They're going to move on to seven and zero. And it wasn't a flashy win this time. We, you know, not a lot of highlight plays. The big 70-yard passes. Or you know, 60 or 70 yard runs, but as a team and as you learn and grow as a team and mature, you have to win a bunch of different ways. And they did a nice job. You see that 233 yards rushing. Mm -hmm. And again, not from big runs, right? Five, six, eight yarders, 10 yarders, three yarders, really pounding it. And that's a credit to that offensive line that we highlighted in the open of this game. 
Coastal just has so many different pieces that are doing their job extremely well this season. It's all come together to create this 6-0, what's about to be 7-0 campaign for Coastal Carolina. You talk about the record books, this season is all over it for the Chanticleers. The first time they beat a ranked opponent did that against number 21, Louisiana. The first time they've been ranked. They're now the highest ranked Sun Belt team ever at number 15. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. They were picked dead last in the Sun Belt for this year, preseason coming into the game. So just goes to show you, you got to play the games, right? Third down. Sonic Clear is trying to convert, and they will not. Race White. Good tackle by the defense. That's just pride right there. You do not want to give up a late touchdown to Coastal Carolina. Excellent job. It would have been really easy for the defense. Oh, the score doesn't matter. We're going to be on the losing end of it. No, you play to that final whistle. Great job there. It was Gallman, the safety that came up. Make that tackle. Keep him out of the end zone. And, and a tough fought game for South Alabama. Again, it's a team that's almost there. They're getting better each and every week. But just not enough tonight for the 15th ranked Coastal Carolina shot to clears. It wasn't easy. Coastal able to score two touchdowns in the first quarter. They were held to field goals the rest of the way. But Coastal Carolina 7-0 this season. Their best start since 2015. Most wins since joining the FBS. And they've really extended this win streak to 8-0, dating back to last season. Jamie Chadwell's team rolling and finding a way to win. And, and not as easy as last week's 51-0 win. But again, you said it. I talked about earlier. Finding ways to win when you're not really clicking on all cylinders. Thought the defense, though, played lights out for Coastal Carolina tonight, especially that front seven. You can't say enough about Teron Jackson, the big defense end. Exceptional game tonight. And some flashy plays for this Coastal Carolina defense. Still, nobody has been able to take down the Coastal Carolina Shanta Clears. That record stays perfect. They get it done on the surf turf here in Conway. A win over South Alabama, 23 to six. Coastal Carolina rocking in 2020.